So this is a longer poem, so bear with me. This is the longest piece that I'm going to do tonight. So it's the end of a very long week. And I'm sitting in the 30th row of a 747 from Dallas to Los Angeles. The captain has signaled our final descent. My seat back has returned to the upright position. My tray table has been stowed, and I am finally going home. And then a gurgle under my seat buckle tells me that lunch is gearing up for a second appearance. And a frantic search teaches me that Delta Airlines apparently doesn't regularly restock seat pockets with sick bags. And so I do the only logical thing I can think of and MacGyver my Sky Mall catalog into a makeshift haversack. <laughs> but before I can crease the outside edge, my body betrays me. <laughs> Which means that I'm sitting there wearing my stomach acid as a loose tuxedo. <laughs> while the entire plane, including the hot girls across the aisle, whispering gag, next crane as we make our torturous descent into LAX, and then as the entire jumbo jet deplane slowly around me. A thought crosses my mind. You are an incredibly incompetent airline. And then a second thought crosses my mind. Lucky me for the life experience. Lucky no one I know will ever find out about this. Lucky the plane didn't crash. Lucky for planes in the first place, because if I'd thrown up on myself in a covered wagon, <laughs> some settler would have been all like, I, you know we broke a spoke a mile back, and if you don't quit sulking and help push, we might not be able to ford this river before nightfall, in which case you're gonna smell mighty good to the Grizzlies. <laughs> so it's lucky that the atmosphere puts planes on its back, that the air is so thick it bumps against our ears, which is how we hear. We're lucky there's so much carbon around. We're lucky for granite. Granite has done big things for us. We are lucky conditions on this planet. We're perfect for life cocktail to turn a couple of atoms into an amoeba, into a cheetah. We're lucky that one monkey finally got his crap together and turned into a dude. I mean, don't forget the vocal cords, the lungs, lucky the opposable thumbs, the disposable mans, the glands, the McLanolin and lambs, dismantled ham radios and bands, the videos for jams that are just witty odes to brands, and lucky for that one reunion on Cape Cod where we first began to understand my father's side of the family. You know, some say... If you listen close in those old wooden hallways, you can hear the ghost of Woody Allen groaning at night. I'm not dead yet, you schmucks. <laughs> but the living, the living gather around the dining room table, sharing, showing class, saying lucky, lucky. Lucky my ass. You call this lux? Fresh water? Salt water? Neither. You lie. This salmon is so dry, it must be the kind that they catch in the sky. Oh, Stephen's health? Yeah, they removed a tumor. However, that was the Kansas tumor. Yeah, Kansas can grow tumors too, smart guy. Dr. Rubin removed the original cancer. It's now malignant in the skin cell. They couldn't tell his mole because his vitiligo stole the pigment. He looked, let me tell you, like an albino with three shoulders. He tried to dye himself back to normal in a bathtub of Coca-Cola, but now he's got dementia and he thinks he's Al Roker. Oi, a schwarze and a goy, but hey, I can't complain, you know, at least he's better than Roker at forecasting rain. <laughs> and that, my friendly Lutheran college, is how a Jewish person ends a story. <laughs> I can't complain! Grandma, you just literally complained for 45 straight minutes without breathing or blinking. Okay, the nice girl's trying to take our drink order, and if I could get a word in edgewise, I'd say lucky the stomach flu. Lucky that two-month itch I'd rather not talk about. Okay, lucky because perfectly healthy is not a neutral state. Perfectly healthy should be perpetual full-body euphoria. But this is my father's family, and my complaining about their complaining is both concrete proof that I'm one of them and an unfair generalization of a proud people. Mm -hmm. You take my dad. Luckily, he never caught a zip gun ricochet to the face, but if you lean in close, you can see this little blue dimple on his chin from fourth grade sometime in the 1950s when, trying to figure out how the heck they get ink into a ballpoint pen? He accidentally slammed the bick into his jaw, tattooing himself for life. Ouch. And lucky he did, because that wasn't a ballpoint pen at all. It was a flagpole. Ten-year-old Paul Norman Watsky was claiming that little patch of skin for himself and has held his ground even as this unfamiliar man creeps up on 70 around him. I can see it in my dad's eyes every time he laughs at one of his own idiotic puns. Every time he laments the overbearing Jewish mother that made him want to tip out of his Manhattan apartment window like a potted plant. <laughs> and lucky he backed away from the edge. 
and not lucky just because his reproductive equipment was the genetic key to my eventual awesome existence, <laughs> but also because smiles are delinquent teenagers. They like to gather in large groups. They leave marks on the walls of your face to tell you of a life well lived. They're hard to get rid of, but once they're gone, you wonder why you've pushed them away. You wander into their dusty old rooms at night and sit there holding back tears at the edge of their bed, thinking lucky the bend in your box spring that sent those two strong swimmers into the world as decent sons. So lucky San Francisco. Lucky the lights over the harbor. Lucky that every single one of us in this room is so young. Because time, I'm telling you, is a million mile wooden dock, and we're here at the very young end practically dangling our toes in the water. Even if you're a hundred years old, you're still dangling. And you'll shoot back. You're damn right I'm dangling. <laughs> in all the wrong places. <laughs> and you would be completely missing my point because I just vomited in my lap in an overbooked jumbo jet, sitting here smelling extremely human. But I still have my feet on the ground. So lucky we're not livestock. Lucky. We're programmed to think that babies are cute. And otherwise, we'd probably ignore them and they'd crawl aimlessly in large packs. <laughs> America is a plump kid in husky overalls and I plan to live off the fat of the land. This country is a big cupcake straddling two oceans and lucky it wasn't me and you and someone had to fight and die so we could rot our teeth of the frosting. This planet is made mostly of carbon and Teflon and someday we'll slide off it like so much burnt stir fry. There's a lot that goes into a moss-covered rock. But we're lucky that there's so many cool bugs under them. And granted, it sucks that we eat a few by mistake at night, but at least we don't crawl into spiders' mouths while we're sleeping. A web of impossible coincidences has crystallized into this moment. Look around you. History is afoot. This night smells like no other ever has or ever quite will. So don't hold your nose when you walk past me, girl. I just martyred myself to give everyone on this plane an amusing part of the story. <laughs> so you better thank those lucky stars. All 300 billion of them. Lucky you. <laughs> lucky me. Thank you.